Hey, what's going on guys? Jerry here with 3DHP. And in today's video, I'm resin printing an awesome model here by Sanix. We've got Sub-Zero. So we'll get into it right after this. All right, guys, here we are over at Sanix3D.com's website. I've been, been printing his amazing models for around five years now. And uh, he's got a Patreon, which I encourage everybody to join. He's got a lot of great models. And if you don't want to be on the Patreon, you can buy them individually also. And for today's video, I've got Sub-Zero right here. And if you buy the file outright, it's 18 euros. And uh, here's some different pictures of the model. Different angles. And these files, they are, they come pre-supported for Cheetah Box, or they come for FDM, where they're not pre-supported. Whenever I print anything in my resin print, I do not usually use a pre-supported. I go with the FDM models, and uh, the dog's out back barking. And all these things are fan art. Obviously, they're not the originals from the movie or from a cartoon. They're all different. But... There I go saying butt again. Let me open up Cheetah Box here and I'll show you what I'm doing here. Okay, here we are in Cheetah Box. This is their pro uh, beta version that I'm using right here for this. I've got a profile set up for my Anacubic and my for Uniformation GK2. Now, this video was going to be done on the Uniformation GK2 8K resin printer, but on my first print, it locked up on me at 50%. Not sure why it happened, but after asking around online and asking different people matt farm farmer had weighed in that it might be a bad a usb stick that i got from them so i i re-sliced the files i ended up putting them on my anacubic photon mono x and printing them then when i got down to the last part which i had a fail on part of his base the side of the dragon had a big hole in it i went back over to the uniformation for the last part now the way i sized my model since i wanted to make this bigger all the models here, let me drag the screen over and I'll show you here. Now, these are all one-tenth scale and these are basically set up for FDM. They're not pre-supported. And since I wanted to use a, a, the largest part of my build volume, I went to the largest part, which would be the base here. And then I checked different parts of the model to see how large I could make them where they fit on the build surface. So as an example, let me drag over that base I just showed you. Okay, here's a base at 100% scale. The way it was designed, 100%. That's on my anti-cubic uh, photon mono X. And I'm going to scale this up to 175%. Okay, there's 175%. Now, on that resin printer, that's as large as I can go. So I will just orient it. I can slightly tilt it, not much. I got to make it fit. And then I hollow the models. I always hollow my models. So I come up here to, uh, let's see, where is it at? Prepare, hollow. Oop, I have to select the model first. Okay, for hollowing, I'm going two millimeters thick on all my prior models for years now. I've done three millimeters. Two millimeters should be perfectly fine, and uh, you can set the infill density right here. I've got it set at 30%. Let's take that down to, no, oh, let's try 15%. Because you have to have internal support to most models. They won't print properly, and hit apply. Now it's going to go through. It's going to slice it. This has already been done. I'm just showing you this as an example, how I would do it. And we'll let that run for just a second. And as you can see here, it's just slowly hollowing the model. It's got an internal grid system in it at 15%. It hollows it all the way down. And then we're gonna go up here to dig holes. We need to put holes in it, drain holes. So bring that over here. They're gonna be five millimeter drain holes. And you can change any setting that you want on them. Let me move that back off the screen. And then I'm gonna put a hole at the top somewhere around the bottom the sides and the middle and then when possible i can 
scroll in here a little bit, I can put some in here. The easier it can drain out the excess resin better and for uh, curing it. And close the tab for dig holes. And over here on the right, we've got all these plugs we have to get rid of. So I'm going to go through and click all these plugs. We don't want them printing. And we hit the delete key. Oop, I missed one right there. And that's deleted. And Cheetah Box Pro, I can make this model whatever color I want. Just for shits and giggles. And I'll show you pictures of all this as I resin print them. Okay, now we need to add supports. So we come up here to the tab, it simply says supports. I'm going to let that load for a minute. Come on, hurry up. And I'm using basically stock settings here. I've got a five millimeter lift off the model off the base. Now, one thing about a model, you want to orient the model. You usually tilt them back, never have them flat on the build surface. And figure out which side is the front of your model. Have that down. You don't want supports all in front of the model when you're showing it. In case you can't clean them up really good, you don't want to have any little divots or marks on it. It's a little more work in sanding and putting and stuff like that. So always try to orient your model so that there'll be less supports on it. And it doesn't matter if you have one part or ten parts on the bed. With resin printers, it prints by the layer. So it doesn't matter if you have one tall object or 20 tall objects. It's all going to print and be finished at the same amount of time because it prints per layer. So we'll come over here. Um, let's see. Scroll down, hit Add All. And as I mentioned, I've already got this done here. I'm doing this after the fact. Just kind of give you an example, you know, how this will work. So we'll let that run here for a minute and we'll go through and add supports. You can add them manually. Auto supports usually work great for me. You can pick one heavy supports, light supports, medium density, whatever you need. Um, the different types of tips, the angles, thickness, it can all be ad uh, adjusted in here. So that's almost done doing its thing. But I've never used lychee. I always, always loved using Cheetah Box. Works great. Now you can see there are the red lines. Those are just a couple things that are just barely out of the print area. And it's going to give me a warning about that. But I can just take that and I can go back up here to uh, prepare. And I can just take my mouse and I can move that just slightly forward. Now it's completely all on the build volume. See there's one support there in red. So let me drag that back just a hair. There. Now just a tip of it's going to be out of the build surface. That's not going to matter. So ooh, oh, right there at the top. A little bit more. There we go. That's going to work. So then I just go through and I slice it. Hit single perimeter slice. Now on the anti-cubic, that's shown me how big the print volume is. See that square? That's how big I can print on that anti-cubic Photon Mono X. So kind of gives you my visualization what it's going to look like so we simply hit slice we'll load this file on this disregard that okay it's saying right here let me pull that over that it exceeds the print volume to want to continue yes where it was exceeding was little tiny tabs at the bottom all the supports are in there will be perfectly fine that'll print perfectly fine so once it gets done we'll save the file put on sd card we'll jump over to the printer and we'll get going so here we go guys See what we got here. Came out nice. Got a couple different resins that are mixed together. But yeah, looking good. We're done, and I've got a small fail on the side. 
and I think I know what caused that. I added resin as it was printing so it was getting low and I failed to shake up the bottle and it came out very thick on this one one corner and I'm pretty sure that's what happened there. So like I stressed everybody always shake up your resin really good and there I didn't do it when adding and uh, yep got a small problem here from the dragon on one of his horns. I might be able to reshape that with uh, some putty. But other than that, looks like the two arms, the head came out good, so I'll have to wait and see how that's going to look when I get down there. But you can see the one fail right there on that one horn. But other than that, it came out good, so. Alright, let's take a look at the base I got done. Let's see how it came out. A dragon built in there to it. It's nice. So they cleaned up some IPA and uh, put all them sports off. Very nice. Okay, final parts are done. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to clear up all the supports here and see what I got. See one part pulled away from them right there, but it still looks fine. So get that all cleaned up and uh, get her done. Get her done! All right, here we go. Since I had a partial failure on my last part here, this dragon had a hole in it on the anticubic and I was getting low on resin. So I jumped back over here to Uniformation 8K and uh, reprinted it. Looks like my raft whipped it there a little bit, but it came out really good other than that. I don't see anything wrong with it. So let's get it cleaned up, strip the sports, dry it, and cure it. Okay, sub is all primed. Yeah, I forgot to show you this tapestry, this banner. Uh, when I, before I primed it, I forgot to show you that in the last picture, but I got that done. That simply drops in the hole right from the top of the dragon's head. But yeah, he came out amazingly well. Um, now that I've got it primed gray, I can go around and find any imperfections or old tiny supports or anything I missed or places I might need to sand will show up really easily once you prime it. And uh, yeah, it came out beautiful. And this one section right down in here, like I mentioned, that was done on the 8K resin printer. The rest was done on the 4K and cubic. And, uh, yeah, it came out amazing. I noticed on his scales on his back here, the definition where the 8K part was done does look a little more defined than the 4K. I can visually see a little bit of difference there. It was a little sharper. So, came out beautiful. Amazing sculpt by Sanix. And the total height... I think he's about 18 and three quarters, and the figure itself is about I don't know, 12 and a half inches. So yeah, I hollow three millimeters thick, or excuse me, two millimeters. Typically, I always I've always done things for years at three millimeters. Want to save a little resin? I went ahead and hollowed two millimeters thick, and uh, everything's been hollowed. And uh, yeah, came out amazingly well. And this, like I say, this was done in various resin. It was Tig Tag, Focus resin. I had a couple different resins that I used. And uh, you know, a lot more great videos to come. And I'll have a link down below where you can check out Sanix. 
this website and the cable. And then when I done the time lapses, I used to the uh, Uncle Jesse and Andrew, Andrew Sinks resin lapse cable. This will be a link down below where you can find that. And there's a barcode. You want to scan that right there. But yeah, it works amazingly well on my Canon cameras. As long as this can see a light source, every time it does a layer, it will activate the sensor. Your camera will take a picture. Then after about three to 4,000 pictures later, you have a time lapse. And then you throw them in your uh, editing software. It puts them together like a movie, and then you speed them up or slow them down however fast you want. But it came out great. Amazing model by Sanix. Uh, Sub-Zero for Mortal Kombat. So please like, subscribe, and share everybody, and you have an awesome day. Later.